Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. And today we're going ahead and testing the DJI Spark, doing some range testing. And I want to test it in 2.4 gigahertz. This one is kind of difficult to get into 2.4 gigahertz. You can't really access it straight from the app. So what you have to do is you have to, especially with the OTG cable, is you can't access it. So if you want to go in 2.4 gigahertz for longer range, supposedly, you have to um, go ahead and link your phone to your controller wirelessly in 2.4 and then you go ahead and plug in your OTG cable. So we're gonna go ahead and do that real quick and then go ahead and do the range test and see if we can get a little bit better picture, a little bit further with the 2.4 gigahertz. So let's get started. Okay, so of course the first thing you wanna do is go ahead and turn on your controller and then turn on your spark. And make sure your Spark is in um, controller mode, RC mode. So once you know it's in RC mode, you just wait for it to connect to the RC. And of course that's done by looking at the red blinking light, making sure it's green. Okay, cool. So I don't have the OTG cable plugged in yet, but I do have the controller linked to the Spark. My phone's on. And what we wanna do is we wanna go into our wireless Wi-Fi of the phone. I wanna make sure it's linking to the controller. So it's already connected since I connected previously. I want to go out of here and we want to go into our DJI Go 4 app. I'll have this on the screen so you guys can see it. And let's go fly. All right, everything looks good on our aircraft status. And what we want to do is check for that um, 5.8 gigahertz up on the top right corner. So I'm going to press on that there. And you see how when we're connected wirelessly to the controller, um, we have the option to go between 5.8 and 2.4, but if you start off with your OTG cable before you connect this, you don't have that option. So I'm gonna go into 2.4 and choose a channel. I'm gonna choose channel nine. I'm gonna press okay. And I'm gonna make sure this is applied. I'm not sure if applying does anything, but so we pressed OK, it has to restart the Wi-Fi. Now you can see on the top right, it's in 2.4 gigahertz. So let's see if we can go fly again. Yeah, so it's locked in 2.4 gigahertz with our manual setting there. We're at 97% power, so we better hurry up. I just wanna make sure our map is caching into our satellite imagery. So click on the satellite imagery, good. So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and plug in the OTG cable in the controller. And you wanna make sure you have your phone plugged in and then plug your controller in last because mine doesn't seem to recognize the cable unless I do that. So cool, so we're all plugged in. We got the OTG cable in. I felt my phone buzz and recognize it. And it looks like the app just kinda um, flashed and we're still in 2.4 gigahertz. So that's how you get into 2.4 with the Spark, and we'll go ahead and launch ASAP here. Slide to take off. You see we have 15 satellites on the little Spark, and with the Spark you wanna go up about 30 feet or so, maybe 20 to 30 feet, just to make sure it has precision landing if you want that home point to be super accurate. So 33 feet. 36 and I'm gonna switch into sport mode here and we're just gonna go straight out. So let me go ahead and start recording. I almost forgot that. So recording on the spark screen and just full throttle forward, full pitch forward. Let's see how far we can get. So you can see in sport mode, of course, it turns off the front sensors. So be careful with that. Go ahead and pitch the camera down. You can see that the um, exposure setting is trying to auto adjust for the trees and the horizon there. Looks like the clouds are about to roll in soon, so we better hurry up with this thing. Okay. So we're up on the mountain, Haleakala Mountain in Hawaii and Maui, so there shouldn't be any interference at all up here, so you should get the best range possible, especially in 2.4 gigahertz. Um, I have done a 5.8 gigahertz range test with and without the parabolic dishes on the antennas. 
of the controller so go ahead and check those out if you want to I'll go ahead and have the link in the description to those videos if you want to go check those out and see what the difference is and the comparisons are cool so I'm just holding it directly at the drone pointing it it's going 29 30 miles per hour and it's staying at 36 feet high it's still in 2.4 gigahertz we're recording distance is just reaching 4,000 feet let's click on the map here so really cool with DJI you have a pretty cool um, ground map there satellite map of where your drone is and all that stuff oops no image is available well, that was weird I guess it just glicked for a second glitched for a second let me try to rotate the gimbal see if we're still yeah we're still in control it was a little bit laggy but it's still still doable just a tiny bit of lag I'm not seeing any glitching on the um, on the screen or anything any pixelation too bad so it looks like it's okay so we're over a mile now we're um, 6,000 feet a mile should be just a little bit over 5,000 so it's looking good so far I'm just keeping the controller pointed directly at it and if you want to know where your drone is compared to you as far as orientation click on this little compass here and you can see how that little um, red arrow is you and then that little dot oh, cancel again you see that little um, tick on the screen there oops so it looks like it might be losing connection aircraft disconnected so that's that's too bad I thought we were going to get way more range than this with the 2.4 yeah so it's returning home now is it returning home yeah it is okay so a little bit disappointing guys the 2.4 gigahertz not doing too great um, I didn't even get two miles with 2.4 so I'm just going to go ahead and return home because it was really glitching out. I'll have had that up on the screen so you could see what my phone was showing me. And uh, it, keeps, it keeps losing signal, it looks like, for the return to home. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I'm just going to let it return to home and press return to home there. signal lost interesting okay so we're coming back just a little over a mile now picture just popped back in you can see there on my phone screen and um, just to let you guys know some people have commented like you can turn off that beeping by pressing the power once I'm, I'm here to show you that it doesn't work if you press the power once it doesn't turn off the beeping so You'd have to turn off the whole controller to stop that beeping, and of course you wouldn't have any FPV. So just to let you guys know, that's kind of false. All right, so it keeps giving me this um, screen of return to home because of loss of signal. So definitely, again, kind of disappointed at the uh, 2.4 gigahertz. Um, range on this that's kind of interesting I was hoping for a lot more because I got over well without parabolic dishes I got just about two miles with just all stock on 5.8 so since supposedly we're on 2.4 I should have got over that from what people are saying you'll get more range um, but who knows Maybe my phone or somebody else's phone is interfering with the signal. Um, anyway, but you want your your maps to show up. So usually people want to have their cell phone data on for um, flights like this. 
so you can see what's going on. Anyway, I'm still coming home, and the spark is too bad because you can't um, pitch the gimbal down when it's returning home. So you know what I'm gonna do is cancel the return to home, press this X here, and press OK, get that beeping to stop. And I'm just gonna kind of floor it home. We should still be in sport mode. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and come home manually here. So I'm just pushing straight forward and we're coming home at 30, a little over 30 miles per hour, a little bit faster than what we left with because we were kind of going into the wind when we left. The wind's kind of like variable five right now, five miles per hour. Cool, so we are right there, we're just about home. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and initiate another return to home. This time I'm just gonna push the physical button on the controller and hold it. That's another option. And uh, until that message pops up. So what the Spark and any other drone like this does is they go up to a designated return to home altitude. And the launch altitude is basically zero, so it doesn't matter how the ground is sloping, it always thinks its launch altitude is zero, and that's why it, it's gonna be, um, you know, always reading from from that ground altitude, its launch altitude. So here it comes. It's definitely off right now, but with precision landing, it should adjust itself. It should look at the ground and position itself a little better. So it's gonna come down. Of course, you can always, there it goes. See how it's it's going ahead and moving on its own because it's analyzing the picture it took on liftoff. Pretty neat stuff for these drones. Saw so how it got really slow there and now it's just really trying to do a precision landing if it can. And let's see how close to the middle of that H it gets. Pretty darn close, wow. So just a couple inches over and that's fully automated landing. So pretty cool guys. So I'd have to say I'm a little bit disappointed with the 2.4 gigahertz theory that everybody has that you get more, more range with that. Unless it's just showing it on the screen but it's not actually going into 2.4 gigahertz because we have to do that little trick um, with the connections. But some people have said they get further range. Apparently I haven't. Um, I get better 5.8 range over here. I'm getting two miles with it all stock in 5.8, as long as I'm pointed at the drone and I have line of sight here and no like, you know, residential interference. And then I just did a test with the parabolic dishes on here and I got over two miles and the video was still solid. At two miles with just no parabolic dish range extender, the video gets really choppy and starts um, chopping in and out. But with these little five to $10 dishes, um, that I use to ex you know, extend the range. The video is super strong and solid all the way past two miles. So anyway, that's the test on all stock with trying to do 2.4 gigahertz. Disappointed, just about a mile I think we got. I'll have the numbers up on the screen so you guys can see that. And also the video recorded on my phone and also the video on the drone. And don't forget, you always want to stop your recording you know, of the drone before you shut it off, otherwise you'll lose your video. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed that flight test. Check out the other ones, the other range tests on the Spark, and all kinds of other videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.